want to read just a couple of verses from the Isaiah reading again. The wilderness in the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and shouting. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. That's from Isaiah 35. But if you read Isaiah 34, you see a totally different picture. In Isaiah 34, the rivers burn with pitch. The land is dry and on fire and there's smoke everywhere. And what comes out of that is Isaiah 35 with the promise, the promise of new life. In this season of creation, we are, we're at an, inflex, at an inflection point. Do we look at Isaiah 34 and the burning and the smoke and the dry land and the desert, or do we look at Isaiah 35 at the blooming flowers and rivers flowing. If we look at that and we say our dream, our dream is to, our dream is to have the blooming flowers. Our dream is to have the flowing rivers. That's our hope. But to hope is to act. And thank you, Marilyn, for this beautiful uh, banner. To hope is to act. Because without action, hope simply is a dream. In this time of our season of creation, I, I encourage you to read Isaiah 34 and 35 together. And then think about what we will leave as a inheritance to our children, our grandchildren, and realize that it is more than a dream. It is hope. And in order for the hope to become reality, God calls upon us to have dominion over the earth, to care for the earth, to act so that those flowers can continue to bloom long, long after we've had our time on earth. Okay, now you get to go to work. And what we're going to do is we, uh, we have two stations set up and you can go out of the sanctuary, form lines or be four lines, on e one on each side of the table. There's a, a sack at the start, you grab that Put one item in as you walk along. And when you get to the end, there's going to be a table set up. Uh, you can just leave that there and we'll have a, a group of two or three people and I need volunteers to be on the table uh, who will pack them into boxes. We're going to do God's work our hands and in about 10 minutes, we will have them all done. Uh, Ronnie's gonna be right there to kind of guide, guide you along. And when we come back, all of that work will be done and we will, with our hands, we will have acted to provide hope for some kids around this world who don't have supplies to learn from. So, with that, I encourage you, get up, talk to each other, enjoy. This is a time when we uh, put our hands to God's work and do some great things for the kingdom. And when we've finished, we'll just come back in and pick up from there. So those of you watching at home, it's going to be kind of quiet in here for the next 10 minutes, but we will be back. Four notebooks. Four notebooks. Four notebooks. Can you help me set this up? We'll get to, when they come here, we'll... Uh, oh, there it is. 
okay? And let's put it right over here. Right about where Debbie is, we'll need some boxes. So if I could get a couple, three guys to come down and help uh, fill the boxes. Just right there. Thank you. And eight in a box, Ronnie. No more than eight in a box. Then we'll just set them off to the side. One of each, other than the four notebooks. So one one bag of pencils, one thing of pencils, one one ruler, one crayon. One thing of pins, one ruler, one ru eraser. Excuse me, Miss Arasa. <laughs> one one set of yeah, four 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 notebooks. Whoop! And then when you've that's right. When you finish, you can go back to the start of the line and come through again until we get it done. Excuse me, Alma, I'm going to reach in here. So four, four notebooks. Yeah, no, I was telling the nurses. Okay, we got more on the other side. pictures.
Come on back. Well, we were short on notebooks, but not short on helping hands. So thank you very much. If you got that done so quickly, you get another two-minute homily. <laughs> Next year, you'll take longer. I know that. <laughs> Buy more notebooks, yes. Interesting reading in Mark today. Got a, a woman who has, is almost without hope. She is not a Jewish person. She's a Syrophoenician, a Gentile. So she didn't have belief in God or really in Jesus. And the requirement for every pagan god, it was kind of like they were, it was expected, they need to be healers. Their, part of their job as a pagan god was to make sure people were healed. Well, guess what? Hadn't worked. Hadn't worked at all. You could say she had tried just about everything, like the woman with the hemorrhage had tried everything. She was desperate. Desperate. Her daughter had a demon. And Jesus has a way of loving desperate people. I remember my mother crying over the toilet when she found out my sister at two weeks old had con contracted sleeping sickness. And Barb would never be able to speak or to take care of herself. She was desperate, crying desperately. And Jesus has a way of loving desperate people. Maybe in your life, you're facing something now. Maybe you're not quite desperate. Maybe you are desperate. Maybe you know someone who is desperate because of health, because of so many circumstances in life. Know this. Jesus has a way of loving desperate people. And Jesus will be there for you as well. Remember, there was no sign of faith in this woman. So this isn't a situation like, do I have enough faith? Please, Jesus, it's not a formula. It's pure, unconditional love and grace. Love and grace for you. And Jesus has a way of loving desperate people. As you come to this table today, come, come with your desperations, come with your joys, and know that at this table, Jesus does have a way of loving desperate people. Amen.